Um, so as I said, uh, expandability is a major design consideration that we have for this. We don't want people to buy this and six months or a year down the road, all of a sudden it's out of date and they need to buy the newest, shiniest thing. Um, so some of the things that help us to do that are, it's simple to implement firmware upgrades. On the uh, Digilent board that we're using, the Spartan 3D FPGA, the uh, USRP, the modified USRP firmware is using only approximately 10% of the FPGA. So without any other changes other than firmware, we can very easily add a lot of functionality into that FPGA. Um, there's also a total of 40 interface. This is a, mainly a feature of the, um, the digital board, but there's about 40 interface signals that are ported from the digital board to our board. So we take those signals, some of them are going directly to our analog to digital converter, while others we, we are able to port through. So once again, in the expandability, we can use those signals in the future to add additional FPGAs, additional hardware to improve the performance should the other components become out of date. Um, and once and finally, the, uh, the PCB is completely powered by the uh, digital board. It takes the clock and power from there. So there's no need for extra uh, power circuitry. It's fully uh, sufficient to use just the digital board. Um, now I'll pass this off to uh, Amr Morsi and he'll go over the uh, software with me. So the goal of the software is to be able to interface with the, with the Spartan 3 um, trainer, the, the, the board pretty much. And um, we wanted to be able to tune uh, F, uh, different frequencies, be able to uh, receive, transmit, uh, and uh, different signals, and give it the capabilities of a software-defined radio, um, fun and give it functions like uh, an oscilloscope, a spectrum analyzer, um, a function generator, stuff that you can find in your lab here in George Mason. Um, to be able to do this, we use Guinea Radio, of course. Why Guinea Radio? It's open source. Um, it provides a library of signal processing uh, blocks, which are which is all available online. It gives you. Um, it has a lot of support by the community, so that's why we used it. Uh, the only problem with Guinea Radio was that the platform that it works on. We used Linux. Because we tried to first make it work on OS X, something nice and simple, but it just didn't work because. Uh, although it supports Mac OS X, a lot of the preliminaries and the dependencies that Guinea Radio uses, um, they were all out of date and it just didn't work. So, um, but however, it is highly, and in Linux it just uses, it just works flawlessly. So we use Linux for that. Uh, the, um, the signal processing blocks by Guinea Radio, we use that to implement our graphical user interface. For our graphical user interface, uh, we try to make it as simple as possible for the user to be able to simply click, um, uh, to be able to sit, simply click on a button and um, just get all the results you want. Um, like for example, the signal generator, just click, you get, you get a GUI for that and you can be able to control it. Um, you, an oscilloscope, spectrum analyzer, for extra functionality, what FM radio is just to demonstrate the capabilities of the hardware. Uh, this is our graphical user interface. These are all the different functions you can do right now. Um, these are all, uh, the graphical user interface, we use Python as per description uh, to go look in, uh, look in your radio library, look for the, all the code you need to run these specific functions, compile it, and run it right away. Uh, and that way you can easily control your, um, your, US, um, your USRP or FPGA or whatever hardware is connected to your computer. Um, and Right now, I'm gonna give Doug uh, to you. Please really explain to you how we went about testing all these different functions. And we work. For testing our video, we decided to split up into three parts. Our first part was to test our receiving capabilities. We also want to test our transmitting capabilities. We wanted to make sure that it was compatible with TNG radio. And we wanted to co compare our radio with the USRB are you pretty existing? In order to test our transmit I mean our receive capabilities, we decided to implement an oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer because the two most important characteristics of the signal are its amplitude and its frequency. And we can test the duty with an oscilloscope and spectrum analyzer. In order to test our transmit capability, we decided to use a function generator. 
instead of, we did that so that we could easily control what kind of signal we wanted our chest with, and we hooked it up to an oscilloscope so we could see exactly what the signal was. Instead of, we did that instead of hooking up to an antenna. <coughs> we added an FM radio to our design to make sure it was compatible with GNU radio. We required no extra hardware and it worked. And I'm going to show you guys a video of a demonstration of the different functions in our um,